Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Kendi Olale. Thanks for joining us. The Federal High Court has lifted the order restraining the Independence National Electoral Commission from collating the governorship result of the Tafaw Baliwaluk government area of Boucher State. Justice Inyang Eko gave the order while delivering judgment in a suit filed by the All Progressives Congress and its candidate, who is the governor of Boucher State, Governor Mohamed Abubakar, against the Independence National Electoral Commission. Dele Atsumbe reports. Back of Bochi State last week approached the Federal High Court in Abuja, challenging the decision of Hynek to resume and conclude coalition and announce results of Tapa Balewa local government area of Bochi State after declaring the election as inconclusive. The suit filed by the All Progressives Congress and its candidate in the Bochi governorship election has Hynek as the sole defendant. The plaintiffs contended that the electoral umpire having announced that there would be a supplementary election could not reverse the decision without the order of a court of competent jurisdiction. INEC challenged the jurisdiction of the court to entertain the matter, arguing that only the election petition tribunal has jurisdiction to hear the matter since the election has already been aired in part. Delivering judgment on the matter, the presiding judge, Justice Iyang Eko, set aside the earlier order of March 19, 2019, which stopped the collation of the results. The court also declined jurisdiction to hear the substantive case, ruling that INEC should be allowed to continue its constitutional duty. The court pointed out that although it has concurrent jurisdiction with the election petition tribunal, it is appropriate to allow the election petition tribunal hear the complaints of the plaintiffs since the tribunal will have a broader jurisdiction to hear the complaints and the ones that will arise after the final results have been declared and the winner returned. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. Following the Federal High Court's judgment on Monday, the 25th INEC will proceed with a collation of governorship result in Tafabalewa local government era of Boucher State and will subsequently announce the final result. Hundreds of supporters of the All Progressives Congress took some some streets of Kano to celebrate the governor Abdullahi Omar Ganduji's re-election. Abdullahi Mustafa captures a scene at the governor house in Kano. This is State Road, the street leading to Kano government house. It was taken over by hundreds of youth, especially supporters of the All Progressives Congress APC, in celebration of the declaration of Dr. Abdullah Omar Ganduji as winner of the governorship election in the state. This was the situation inside the government house where supporters and well-wishers thronged to congratulate the governor. We are so happy, we are proud, and we could say that all these efforts was made was God's making. It is uh, just like revalidation of uh, the perception and belief of Kano State citizens. Dr. Ganduje thanked the people of Kano for renewing his mandate, describing it as a challenge to serve them better. The government of Kano State and the federal government will be one vision, one vision, and one effort. That is to govern you widely, not to rule you unduly. He thanked the Kano Emirate Council, religious and community leaders for their contribution towards maintaining law and order in the state. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. National Human Rights Commission has unveiled the assessment report of Nigeria's 2019 general election. The report is in collaboration between the National Human Rights Commission and Human Rights Advancement Development and Adv Advocacy Center on how to organize elections void of violence. Omenka Amarachiko reports. Elections may have come and gone, but not without memories of destruction of lives and properties and reported cases of ballot box snatching, among others. To address the identified pitfalls, the Commission say the assessment report is structured into 13 chapters, which explores election management in Nigeria and provides insight into legal framework with recommendations that will improve internal democracy within the political parties and creation of specialized election offenses commission that would alleviate risk of violence in elections. Electoral justice is not limited to fairness and freeness of elections. It goes beyond that and includes accountability, 
compensation and remedy for all victims and survivors of crimes committed during the electoral process. It also includes bringing to justice those who commit crimes during elections or who engage in electoral infractions. Nobody should be a member of a political party and be losing their life because of the electoral process. This must stop. The report also captures the challenges associated with social media, fake news, and hate speech. In Abuja, Omenka, Marchuku, NTA News. The All Progressives Grand Alliance says the 2019 general election conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission is reasonably credible, especially the February 19 presidential election. The party's national chairman stated this at a media briefing in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. The election there must be a winner. It is on this premise that the APGA national chairman calls on losers in the elections conducted and concluded so far to team up with the winners in the interest of national unity. The electoral umpire INEC, he says, deserves some level of commendations as some persons had hitherto doubted the commission's capacity to deliver credible polls. But for us, INEC showed immeasurable courage in ensuring that the elections went the way they did. Victor Oye points out that President Buhari's re-election is well deserved as the opportunity will afford him ample time to consolidate on his first term achievements. What Nigerians need to do to the present administration at the center is to continue to pray for the government and support the government. Nigerians have no choice than to do that. We must cooperate with those in leadership positions to move this nation forward. On the party's forthcoming congresses and national convention, the national chairman assures that APGA's constitution will be strictly adhered to. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The victory of President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Yemi Oshi Mbaju at the just concluded general election has been attributed to the mercy of God. Bishop of Remo Anglican Diocese, Most Reverend Ulushina Fakwe, stated this at an inter interdenominational service of praises and thanksgiving organized by the Vice President at his Ikene Remo country home in Ogun State. Correspondent Yemi Dalimo reports that the dignitaries from across the country joined the Vice President to thank. Thank God. So Yemi Oshibaju and wife Dolako, joined by governors and members of the National Assembly, gave thanks to God for the victory at the just concluded elections and its miraculous escape from the February 2nd helicopter crash in Kogi State. <laughs> I pray for every one of us that all of us will be delivered by the Lord and the mighty name of Jesus wife of the vice president, the Lakpo Shibaju, and the governor-elect of Ogun State, Lakpo Abiodun, eulogized the exceptional leadership qualities embedded in the nation's number two citizen. Professor Shibaju, he is an embodiment of sincerity, diligence, intellect, and he's a good man, in whom I'm proud to emulate and call my leader. Earlier, Bishop of Remo Anglican Diocese, most reverend Ulushino, in a sermon entitled Mercies of God attributed the victory at the polls to the mercies of God, which not only gave them the victory, but also grant them the success, deliverance, and wisdom to rule according to the mind of God. From Ikene Remo, Jemi Dalemo, NT News. Elected governors have been urged to be fair, accountable and transparent while running the affairs of the state after the inauguration. Bishop of Lagos Ecclesiastical Province Anglican Commission, Most Reverend Michael Ulushina, gave the advice in a peri-remo in Ogun State, while admonishing Ogun State Governor-elect Prince Dakwa Abiodun during a Thanksgiving service. Yemi Dalimo again reports. The Bishop of Lagos Ecclesiastical Province Anglican Communion, Archbishop Michael Olusun of Fakwe in a sermon entitled, It is God who gives good gifts, said the coming on board of the Ogun State Governor-elect Prince Dakwa Biodun is a gift of God to the people of the state, charging him to add value to lives and governance in the state. <laughs> God will give you those 
The government elect gave God the glory and dedicated its election victory to God. He said the victory is no man's doing but the hands of God alone, promising not to take the mandate given to him for granted. Prince Dakwa Biodun joined by friends and associates down to the altar to offer special thanks to God. Is now the governor elect. We should all rally around him and make sure that his government is successful, and that's the important thing. We thank God for Dakwa um, and we thank God for bringing him at this time. That one that I know very well will not fail Ogunse because he has made impact in whatever he done in his life. To all of us here today, we are appreciating God for what He has done because it's only God that has done this, it's not any man. At the reception, governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Senator Buruji Kashamun, Social Democratic Party, Olatunde Rotimi Pachida, Accord Party, Sa Tokwe Tokoya, Senator elect for the Lagos West Senatorial District, Solomon Olamilek Mwadiola, and other dignitaries joined the incoming governor of the state to celebrate the victory. Ye Midalimo, NTA News. Still to come, a nationwide NAFTA contains World Health Organization's second rating. Details after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back. Governor Watom promises an all-inclusive governance. Pam Imakodi has details of this report and other stories from that zone. Hello, Pam. You're welcome to Makodi. Governor Samuel Otum has called who contested the just concluded governorship election in Benue State to join him to build a Benue of their collective dream. The governor who said this in his speech while addressing journalists at Government House, Makodi after his victory, to promote peace and reconciliation and avoid the use of hurtful and insultive political folk songs. I know that partisan politics is over, now it's about governance. Yes, the platform I secured to become an elected governor of Benway State is People's Democratic Party. But automatically, I have become the governor of all political parties in Benway State. Correspondent Bem Hanya reports that Governor Otom said mistakes were made and lessons learned in his first term and pledged to use the renewed mandate to deliver greater dividends of democracy to the people. He contributed to the victory, which he described as a victory for everyone. Opinion and community leaders, as well as residents of Makudi, the state capital, have called on the governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, to embark on people-oriented projects and provision of basic infrastructure that will enhance the standard of living of the people. They gave the advice against the backdrop of the re-election of the governor for another four-year term. Tena Uma reports. In the supplementary election held on the 23rd of March, 2019, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, declared Mr. Samuel Otom as the winner of the governorship elections. What lies ahead is that the people want quality representation that will bring up governance. I want to advise him to run an all-inclusive government, to embrace everybody because he had become our father, and irrespective of any political affiliation. God tell him that, uh, say that he will continue. So what he will do now is for him to correct all his mistakes. So that lies ahead now is um, at least to throw all the, the campaign and all the campaign problems behind them, come together completely and build a new venue of our dream. What we expect of him is for him to provide good governance for the good people of Benue State. We must think about regenerating the causes of food production. What the people demand is that all political office that have been elected into the various positions, be at the state assembly level or at the government, they must strive to improve the living conditions of the people. In Makodi, Teina, Uma, NT News. The Federal Ministry of Water Resources, in collaboration with the Benue State Government, 
is working out new strategies to ensure adequate water supply and effective billing system in the state. This was the focus of the meeting between officials of both tiers of government and correspondent Iverian Solomon reports. Over a long time now, the issue of inadequate water supply and effective billing system have continued to be a major problem in Benue State. It is in a bid to strike a balance and bring succor to the people of the state that the Federal Ministry of Water Resources and the Benue State Government as well as Development a meeting in the state capital, Makudi, to seek ways to foster proper maintenance of the water works and sustainable billing system. It is now compulsory for us to have this Katapa fund. We have provided some vitals to support the, we have provided two vitals to support the water operator, uh, the water board. Automation and uh, ID-based systems will help. If there are errors and mistakes in this process, it is difficult to capture if the system is manual. Stakeholders say the objectives of the third National Urban Water Sector Reform Project is to prepare Benue water supply system for donors and investors to come in to upgrade water supply in the state. The donors are going to bring 2.5 million. Benue State will come out with 87 million naira as counterpart funding. The consultancy services for development of billing system software and tariff studies are to take effect in nine states of Nigeria with Benue State as the pilot state in Makudi, Iverian Solomon, NTA News. And that will be it from Makudi. Ken dates over to you now for the rest of Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, for the rest of nationwide. Thank you Pam. The Presidential Technical Advisory Committee on the Implementation of the New National Minimum Wage has submitted its report to the federal government. The report contains far-reaching recommendations on how best to fund in a sustainable manner the additional costs of implementing the salary increase for workers in the country. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports that the chairman of the committee, a renowned economist, Ms. Bismarck Rewan, presented the report to President Muhammad Buhari. The Technical Committee, inaugurated on the 9th of January this year, was also mandated to advise the federal government on new revenue sources as well as areas of existing expenditure from where some savings could be made in order to fund the wage increase. This is to ensure that Nigeria's difficult fiscal condition is neither worsened by the consequential increase in workers' salaries and allowances nor adversely impact on the nation's development goals as set out in the economy recovery and growth plan. I am very pleased that the committee took on this important national assignment with all seriousness. Let me thank the chairman, Mr. Bismarck Rwani, and all the committee members most sincerely for your patriotism, your hard work, commitment, and sacrifices. I understand that you have worked tirelessly to ensure that you deliver the report before we receive the minimum wage bill from the National Assembly. We will review this report expeditiously. In the process, we may need to engage with some members of your committee. I therefore implore you to make your services available whenever we may call on you. The President expressed appreciation to, amongst others, the Budget Office of the Federation, the National Incomes, Salaries and Wages Commission, Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, Central Bank of Nigeria, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, and the National Bureau of Statistics for providing strong support to the committee in the course of the assignment. Budget and National Planning Minister Udoma Udo Udoma coordinated the work of the committee, which was also required to propose a work plan and modalities for the implementation of the salary increase. I'm sure that there will be recommendations there that will be helpful to us uh, in terms of making sure there's a seamless implementation of the new minimum wage whenever 
it is passed into law. President Muhammad Buhari later engaged the 21-man committee behind closed doors during which his chairman, Bismarck Rewani, a renowned economist and businessman, made a PowerPoint presentation on members' observations and recommendations, but details were not made public. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. In also health matters, the activities marking the World Tuberculosis Day has ended with a gala night organized by the wife of the president and the global tuberculosis ambassador, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, at the banquet hall of the presidential villa Abuja. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports that the event was organized to celebrate tuberculosis champions and survivors. Appointment as global champion and ambassador for tuberculosis, the wife of the president has been advocating for support to NTB in Nigeria and all over the world. This led to the tremendous success towards the strong interventions of government and other non-governmental organizations in addressing the epidemic, with Nigeria placing among the 30 high burden countries for TB. The night, therefore, is not only to celebrate the TB survivors, but to strengthen advocacy through the collaboration of all stakeholders to increase awareness on the dangers of TB and to take proactive measures to prevent it. Through the efforts of all stakeholders, many lives have been saved and many more have been cured of TB. I want to congratulate every one of us for supporting efforts to end TB in our dear respective communities states and all over the country. Our skills, passion, time and resources have contributed significantly to reduce the spread of TB, reduce the number of deaths and also mitigate the impact of the epidemic. That is why this is a night of celebration and we are celebrating because despite the challenges we have survivors who have been treated and cured of TB. TB survivors, filmmakers, government and non-governmental organizations and all other critical stakeholders from both within and outside the country have lent their voices saying TB is preventable and curable and therefore reaffirmed their commitment to ending the disease. Various awards were presented to outstanding individuals who have in one way or the other contributed towards the effort of ending tuberculosis in Nigeria. From the State House, Ali Kabir. Still staying with Health Niger's Global Rating on Food and Drug Administration in Control has gone up to two, but NAVDEC targets the highest point of four. This is so that it can favorably compete with its counterpart around the world. To this end, NAVDEC is strategizing to increase local production and exportation of standardized Nigerian pharmaceutical products. Chim Dima and Dubisi reports. Staff of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, with the Director General walking through major streets of Abuja to draw public attention on the dangers of fake, counterfeit, and unwholesome products. A job it has been carrying out for 25 years to safeguard the health of the nation. We are setting a much stronger foundation for NAFDAC to exist for decades and decades and decades to come. Our GDP is very, very low when it comes to pharmaceutical manufacturing. The goal is to increase that GDP. Though the agency is said to have achieved much in bringing to the fore issues around substandard food, drugs, and other regulated products, it seeks the support of all to rid Nigeria of the menace. The agency, in carrying out the federal government's mandate of tackling influx and use of psychoactive medicines, which has brought about antisocial behaviors, intercepted containers loaded with tramadol worth 198 billion naira at the ports last year. This is in addition to past successes in this regard. All these, the agency says, are due to enabling environment created by the government of the day. In Abuja, Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. Nigeria met specific targets at the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada Convention, PDAC, in Toronto. In this report, Joy Usago highlights the key event and what Nigeria did differently to change the game. 
Pagbami, a member of the Nigerian delegation from the private sector, came prepared for PDAC 2019. He spoke the language of the convention. Pidak is a place where everyone who wants to do mining comes. But you must come with a vision, you must come with a purpose. And what happened is that the minister defined the purpose, the minister defined the agenda, the minister also chose the right enabling environment and people. They came to meet specific targeted individuals, corporations at PIDAC. And it has worked exceedingly well. And that's all it takes to attract the quality of investors who can make the necessary impact in the mining sector. Because the government said its priorities right, the meeting with the largest gold mining company in the world was productive as the group is set to visit Nigeria. The delegation also met with the Royal Canadian Mint and another major company known as the largest distributors of gold coins in the world, who signed a memorandum of understanding with the Nigerian company in November last year in Abuja. The MOU also has culminated in, in a consortium which is going to provide technical support to the presidential initiative on, on, on gold that's taking place, the state gold purchasing program. The long-term goal here is is for Nigeria to build a much better, more sustainable, community-minded uh, mining uh, regulatory environment where you'll see great investments coming in in a fair and transparent way, but huge payoffs to Nigerian people, to the communities where the mines are located, and to the general coffers or the treasury of Nigeria. Now, while the Nigerian High Commission in Ottawa is standing in as the watchdog here, the ministry and private sector advocates like Tunde Fagbemi will follow up from Nigeria. In Toronto, Canada, Joy Oseago, NTA News. And also Judiciary Matters Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, has called for strict compliance with the Code of Conduct for employers in the judiciary as a way of stemming corruption in the third M of government. He made the call at the opening of a national workshop for heads of law courts in Nigeria. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okeo reports. Inspectors and inspectors are the administrative heads of area, sharia, and customary courts. For them to be so appointed, they themselves must have been judges in any of these courts. So, when the acting chief justice of Nigeria talks about strict adherence to code of conduct for judiciary staff, it is something they themselves are supposed to have passed through and understand its impact on justice delivery. It is in this light that Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed reminded them of their proximity to the grassroots of the society in terms of improving the quality of justice delivery. It's a different country from what it used to be. Let us effect the changes that give us all the development in this country. Anything that is not worthwhile, please forget about it. Organizers of the workshop are of the hope that it would guide against miscarriage of justice at the lower court level. Apart from the renewed emphasis on transparency and integrity, all employees of course, including directors and inspectors of the area, through Sharia, through customary courts, are obliged to adhere to the highest standards of integrity and moral rectitude. This is the first time the National Judicial Institute is holding We sincerely apologize for the breaking that report. The appeal court sitting in Sokoto under the leadership of Justice Tom Yakubo has set aside a judgment of the Zamfara State High Court that allowed APC field candidate for the 2019 governorship, national and state assembly elections. Shil Mohammed Dati has the details. Yakubo said the lower court had failed to evaluate the evidences presented before reaching the decision. The presiding judge noted that document evidence have upper consideration over oral ones. I think that the lower court should have looked in depth into right of someone, statement of claims, replies, and affidavits. The judgment was adopted by two other justices, Tijani Abubakar and Jamilu Tukur, who agreed that the lower court had failed in its duty to properly evaluate the evidences before it. However, the ruling noted that federal, state, and FCT courts have jurisdiction to entertain the 
matter against the challenge of the appellants. All the judges agreed that the judgment should serve as data lesson as legitimate guidelines and rules ought to be followed at all times. They have set aside the judgment of the lower court on which INEC relied to allow APC in Zafra State present candidates. So other issues will come up subsequently, either at the election tribunal or on a further appeal to the Supreme Court. For today, it is a victory against us because we are the first to the 38 respondents. The justices did their job and they did it well, but we are definitely going further. It could be called that the Zamfara High Court had recognized the primary elections held by APC in the state and declared that INEC accepted the party candidates for elections. Unsatisfied with the state high court decision, the appellants approached the appeal court challenging the decision that the state high court lacks jurisdiction to entertain the suit. Similarly, a case of this nature was instituted before the same appeal court by Aminu Jaji, member representing Gaurana Namoda Brendan Mugaji, prior constituency and the governorship candidate and was dismissed after judges withdrawal in Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Detti, NTA News. Press freedom is said to fill democracy by ensuring transparency, accountability and the rule of law as well as promoting citizens' participation. President Nigerian Union of Journalists Chris Isibuzo said this in a meeting with newsmen ahead of the 2019 NUJ Press Freedom Award. Adebola Brooks and Sunday reports. Many journalists have faced harassment, threats, physical injuries, imprisonment, and even death in the course of discharging their legitimate duties. Freedom is one of the key drivers of democracy. Addressing newsman Chris Iziguzo said the award is organized to celebrate and motivate journalists as well as promote press freedom, good governance, and deepen democracy in Nigeria. A distinguished guest speaker will deliver a lecture on the role of the media in elections and democracy. It will be a gathering of cream de la cream of Nigeria's media icons, policymakers, technocrats, captains of industry, diplomatic corps, civil society, and multilateral agencies. The welfare of journalists, especially creating a special salary structure, the president said, is of top priority. I want to assure us that there's something that we're taking seriously uh, because we know the occupational hazards that we face every other day. One of the key organizers, Ruben Okala, urged media outfits to send their nominations for the award, which opens March 25th and ends April 2nd, 2019. This forum wants to start recognizing ourselves and to honor ourselves because nobody wants to honor us and so we must honor ourselves. The event, with seven categories of awards, will also honor media owners, political and public office holders who have actively supported press freedom in Nigeria. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Public and private institutions have been enjoyed to stand united for the common interests of the growth and development of the nation. President of Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors, Obafemi Unishile, represented, made this remark at the 11th investiture of NIQS Abuja chapter. Deborah Mika brings the highlight of the ceremony that ended the Nigerian Television Authority in award for objective reportage and projecting housing program for all body of the Nigeria Institute of Quantity Surveyors is 50 years this year and it has enjoyed some level of support from partnering organizations including the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Men and women of integrity and I'm confident that they will live up to our expectations. They should continue to build upon the solid foundation laid by their predecessors. In his inaugural speech, Chairman Abuja Chapter of NIQS, Otaru Joseph Omokabo urged professionals in every endeavor to shun sentiment. I will not uh, encourage any quackery in any form. I've said it before that uh, you, as a professional, you must develop yourself. We work together as a family, and that has helped us a great deal 
in what we have achieved. Guest speaker, Professor Shehu Abdullah Izuru, in a paper presentation titled Mentorship Underscored the Need to Individually Indulge in Grooming the Young Generation to Instill the Spirit of Professionalism through Development. This perception that as a professor in the university, why should my own student be better than me? Now, that is not knowledge, that is sadism. It's how important this chapter is. And um, I wish to sincerely thank the past leaders for the growth and for sure leadership to be able to come up to this level of our development. Meritorious service certificate awards were presented to the fellows. However, Benin Network Center is next on Nationwide and Obey is our guide. Hello, Obey. Thank you, Kende, for joining us in Benin. Following the victory of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the general elections in Edo State, an interdenominational Thanksgiving service has held to appreciate God. The event, at the instance of the state government, attracted dignitaries from across the state. Good luck in any reports. The governor expressed gratitude to God for the violence-free election in the state and emphasized that though victory is important, it is not as important as the violence-free election record the state has achieved. That we had elections in the state and we did not lose one life. When I woke up this morning, I said, that's a that is what is most important for me, not the victory. declared that the people will remain his priority despite the fact that some persons want him to do otherwise. He assured that his administration will continue to work with the church and religious leaders who know and feel the pulse of the people. The governor noted that the Edo State House of Assembly election has shown that Edo electorates are appreciative of the effort his administration has made to make life better for them and promised to sustain the temple. Prayers were offered for the governor for God's continuous guardians and enthronement of wisdom. In Benin, good luck in any NT News. A total of 450 students have been admitted into the various departments of the Edo University Iyamu for the 2018-2019 academic session. The Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Emmanuel Aluyo, during the fourth matriculation ceremony to welcome the new entrants, urged them to take advantage of the state-of-the-art facilities in the school to brighten their horizon. Victor Odion Acha reports. The students are happy being in a world-class university. They have good facilities of learning and good environment too. I have to live a good life here and become a better person. Some of the parents said they are attracted to the school by the facilities. I'm very satisfied that the facilities are good. My children agree with me and they are here. Um, I went to the engineering department, so I saw the infrastructures, all the machines and everything. I was so impressed. The vice chancellor of the institution commended the state government for making the school one of the best in the country. We also do hope that our students, with the kind of training that we are giving to them, there will be no riots. So having ensured that in the last four years, I'm indeed very proud. The university is expected to produce its first set of graduates before the end of this year. In Iyamu, Victor Odion Acha, NTA News. A special prayer is held in honor of the late Okwokwila Gbe of Okwila, Alhaji Andrew Yusuf Drisu, Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki, who joined the people to pay respect to the late traditional ruler, described him as a peacemaker and an advocate of social development. David Irie reports. It was purely a solemn gathering to pray for Almighty Allah to accept the soul of the late traditional ruler whose reign on the throne centered on bridging the gap between the rich and the poor. 
Edo State government acknowledges the fact that he lived a life of service which led to several industries being established in his domain, thereby creating job opportunities for his people. In memory of Ali Fab, I am going to construct this road. It will have street lights and if popular people do not mind, I would like the name to the street to be named after his royal majesty. For his immediate family, nothing can be more consoling than the reign of goodwill they have received since their father died. We must remember that tomorrow we must leave something behind for people to remember. And the God Almighty above will help us to continue exactly what he has taught us. I, I don't think there's anybody in the community that will have anything negative to say about him. And Anytime you come, there's something comforting for you to take away, whether you're a child born in this com uh, compound or not. There's something for you from the king. The portrait of the late Okokwi Lagbe was presented to the family by the Afemai World Congress based in the USA. The late Dr. Andrew Yesufu Dirisu reigned on his ancestral throne for 48 years and died on the 19th of February at the age of 84. In Okwila, Edo State, David Ayre, NTA News. And that's it from Benin. Kende, it's over to you for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Obe. A report just written on says a three-story building marked for demolition at Kakawa Street, Lagos Island, has collapsed. There was no casualty as occupants already vacated the building since Saturday. We'll bring you details in our subsequent bulletin. It's time to go to Joss and Felicia is standing by. Thank you, Kende. Welcome to JOS. Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong has dedicated his victory at the polls to the people of Plateau State, saying it is a call to greater service and accountability to the citizens. The governor said this during his acceptance speech shortly after being declared winner of the 2019 governorship elections. Prisla Grumnan completes the reports. The governor, who thanked the people of the state for keeping faith in his administration, solicited more cooperation and partnership to deliver dividends of democracy along the five-point policy thrust of his campaign. Fellow citizens, we once again came out and mass and voted us to serve a second and final term as executive governor of the state. Together with my deputy, Professor Sonny Wande Children, Paul Hertedly accept his mandate to serve for a second and a final term with all the humility of his heart. Governor Lalong, who congratulated his fellow contestants for the maturity exhibited during and after the electioneering, called on them to join hands in building a greater plateau. To me, this victory is a mark of honor and clarion call for consolidation of our gains and the sustainable, peaceful coexistence for the good of the state. Together, we will do more. Jigawa State Governor Mohammed Badaru Abubakar, who was in the state in the spirit of solidarity, extolled the leadership qualities of the governor, saying his re-election was well-deserved because of his track records of achievements. In Joss, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. Meanwhile, some opinion leaders and party stalwarts in Plateau State have applauded the peaceful disposition of the people during and after the elections. This, they say, is an indication that government's effort at building at peace building and the will of the people to live in peace is realizing positive results. Abdul Wahab Babankanti has the details. With the declaration of Governor Lalong as the winner of the 2019 governorship election, the mood in town is generally peaceful as the citizens go about their businesses. To those who have lost, I think they should be patient, have enough time. And, uh, we believe that the future will tell. Among them, there are maybe leaders that will still emerge to lead us in Plateau State. Now that it is over, uh, we should all embrace one another and support the government of the day and, uh, so that uh, with that uh, we will achieve much more progress and unity. Some political leaders 
describe the victory as well deserved, considering the governor's track record of achievements, and appeal to him to run an inclusive government. Mr. Excellency is to, to accept the victory with magnanimity, extend his hand and embrace everybody to build the plateau of our dream. Since the essence is to lead the people of Plateau State, and he should have an open door policy where everybody is important. To the APC family, it was a victory for the state as they converge on JOS from across the 17 local government areas to celebrate the victory. In JOS, Abdulhaba Bankanti, and TA News. Leaders at all levels have been told to use the mandate entrusted in them with the fear of God so as to make life better for the citizenry. It was during the Sunday Mass where the newly re-elected governor, Simon Lalong, came to return thanks to God for his victory at the polls. Priscilla Grumnan has details. Barely 24 hours after his re-election to serve another four years, Governor Lalong says he has come to show gratitude to God for the victory and for the peace witnessed throughout the state. While thanking God for the numerous blessings, Governor Lalong called on the people of the state to eschew religious, tribal, and ethnic sentiments, but be united in forging a common front for the progress of the state. My principle is to talk about peace. And in peace, there must be love for one another. But I would like to thank those who prayed for me, who prayed for the state. That was why I quickly ran up today here to seek for that blessing, to say thank you. Taking his text from the Gospel of Luke chapter 13, Reverend Father Emmanuel Kleiser called on the congregation to use their individual callings by impacting positively on the lives of the people. We pray for our children growing up. We pray for ourselves in the everyday normalcy of life. May God be intervening and shaping us for his future and last plans for us. The liturgical celebration coincided with the Lady Week of the Church in Jos. Priscilla Gumnan, NTA News. That's our contribution from Jos. We'll take a break. Nationwide continues shortly in Abuja. And that's all on Nationwide. Thank you for watching. I'm Kende Olale. Good evening.